The 1893 World's Fair would mark the 400th anniversary of Columbus's arrival in the New World. A previous World's Fair, held in Paris, had given rise to the Eiffel Tower, then the tallest man-made structure on Earth. Some thought Chicago wasn't up to hosting the fair. Outsiders called it the Windy City, complaining that it was full of simple profit-seeking windbags. Immediately, various cities began to kind of bid on hosting it. Should it be in Philadelphia or should it be in New York, the largest city in the United States? But then you have this one upstart city, Chicago. Chicago was not a vacation destination for anybody in those days, certainly not from the East Coast. And I think the idea was to show how sophisticated this frontier town had become. It was the city where you would find skyscrapers taller than any other place in the United States. It was the city with parks and boulevards and a modern transportation system. So if you wanted to demonstrate everything that the United States had to offer and everything in the 19th century that was paving the way for the marvels of the 20th, Chicago is where you should have the World's Fair. Millions from around the world are expected to visit the amazing fair. And H.H. H. Holmes sees dollar signs. Holmes wants to build a third floor on his castle and open it as a hotel. Investors see this as an opportunity to make money. That worked out very well for Holmes because people were being entirely too free with their credit. He could just show up with a letter saying, hey, give this guy all of your stuff and I'll pay for it. And that worked like a credit card. For Holmes, business prospects are looking up, and once again, so is his personal life. <laughs> Before the opening of the World's Fair, another attractive woman finds herself falling under the spell of Holmes. Her name is Minnie Williams. Minnie Williams was an aspiring actress who decided to give up on acting and move to Chicago and get a real job. And there's probably a lesson here about giving up on your dreams, because the first thing she did was get a job working for H.H. H. Holmes. In late spring, Minnie writes to her sister Nanny and tells her all about her new partner and invites her to visit them in Chicago. When Holmes discovers that Nanny is in fact wealthy, he's all for this invitation and even tells them that if Nanny comes to Chicago, they will all go to visit the World's Fair. The World's Fair opened on May 1st, 1893. The grounds featured awe-inspiring neoclassical buildings, painted in white, spread out over nearly one square mile. It would draw more than 20 million people. The World's Fair was one of the world's most extremely gigantic, amazing, enterprises that had ever been carried out over that time. Visiting the 1893 World's Fair was, according to some descriptions, like walking into a dream. In fact, a lot of people know of it as the White City, but it was also called the Dream City. It's basically a sort of utopian version of the urban experience, and all you have to do is pay 50 cents to enter. Fair must have been like a preview for what the 20th century was going to be like. Uh, not only were you seeing these massive buildings on a scale most people had never seen before, all with electric lights, you could see things like early examples of automobiles, hamburgers, hot dogs, moving pictures. All of these things that we would come to associate with the 20th century were out of the World's Fair. And this symbolized the dawn of this new century, as much as the turn of 1900 actually did. Nanny, the sister of Holmes' latest conquest, Minnie, arrives in Chicago. And true to his word, Holmes takes her to the World's Fair on July 4th. But then, something mysterious happens. Within 24 hours, both Minnie and her sister Nanny have vanished 